As a writer, should you write what you know, or should you write something that you don't know and explore the unknown? In this video, I talk about the age-old question and offer some tips and things that I've learned after writing over 50 books. What's up guys, Michael Aran here with Author Level Up, helping you write world-class stories better and faster. And I create these videos because I believe that each of you has a Stephen King level talent and you just need help unlocking it. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and click that little bell, ding, 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 to get notifications every time I have a new writing video. And in this writing video, we're talking about the age old question, writing what you know versus exploring the unknown. And this is a question I get a lot. It's a question that I wrestle with a lot, even though I've been doing this about seven years. And on one hand, right, you, we, we want to be able to take our experiences that we've uh, had in life, and we want to infuse those into our writing. But on the other hand, one of the most exhilarating parts of being a writer is exploring what you don't know and exploring yourself. So what should you do on the page? All right, let's talk about writing what you know first, and we'll talk about pros and cons. So let's just use a simple example here. Let's say that you are an engineer who lives in Florida who loves to read thriller novels, all right? So as a result, you write a thriller novel about an engineer who lives in Florida. Can, can't get any simpler than that, right? Let's talk about the pros to that. You're writing what you know, okay? And it's, it's safer. <laughs> We'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, it's easier because you know about the experience, right? You don't have to do any research about being an engineer. That's part of the fabric of who you are. You don't have to do any research about the area of Florida that you live in because you live there every day, right? And you know thrillers in and out because you grew up reading them. It's just a lot easier and you don't have to do research. And research can take up a lot of time. I think people often forget that when you're writing a novel. And when you don't don't have to do that, you cut your production time considerably. Another pro about this method, and it's a big one, is that you're going to be able to write more realistically because you're going to be able to put details into the story that your average person wouldn't know about. And that's very intriguing to readers, right? Because readers love to get windows into the, the lives of other people that they don't, they don't know or, or professions that they don't know about, right? And so you can automatically do that. That's going to make your stories more engaging. It's going to make it easier for you to hook readers and readers love that. So let's talk about the cons of writing what you know. So I just mentioned that readers love those details, right? But sometimes this route can be a little inflexible, right? So readers can get a little too accustomed to whatever it is that you're writing, right? A story about an engineer who lives in, in Florida and it's a thriller novel, right? If you want to write an urban fantasy one day, it's going to be harder for them to accept that and they're going to be less likely to follow you and you're going to have to rebuild your audience all over again. Um, and when you're out of your comfort zone, uh, readers aren't going to like that as much. So that's something that you have to think about. It's almost like a, a little bit of a golden handcuff situation. The next con, which in my mind is a big one, is that you can get bored. You might wake up one day, two or three years from now and, and realize, you know what, I don't want to write this anymore. And it might be a challenge to change course. <laughs> so that's a, a con. And on the other side of that coin, that's something that can burn you out. All right. So uh, that risk exists not for everybody, uh, but it is possible that you know writing only what you know uh, can burn you out and you can get tired of it. Or maybe there's a possibility that you run out of ideas. I mean, all these things can happen. Um, writing, writing what you know, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that it is the more effective way if you have a ton of ideas and if you're never going to get tired <laughs> of what you're writing. But if you are if you're somebody that needs a little bit of diversity, you need to change things every once in a while, just know that that's a path that can be dangerous for you. Now, let's talk about writing what you don't know. <laughs> so you guys know that that is my mode of operation, has been for about the last seven years. Now let's use this same example, all right? So let's say you are an engineer who lives in Florida who loves to read thrillers, but you're one of those people that says, you know what, I live engineering every day, I don't want to write that in my novel. <laughs> so instead, you want to write something different. So instead, you write a space opera about a doctor, right? So totally different, 
Because one, you're out of your comfort zone. You know nothing about being a doctor. And two, you've read a little bit of space opera, but maybe you haven't read enough of it to be 100% conversant in the genre. Now first, let's talk about the pros, because I think the pros are pretty big, asterisk. All right, we'll come back to this in a second. <laughs> the pros are pretty big if you get them right, all right? And the first is, there's nothing more exhilarating as a writer to explore something that you've never explored before and then come away um, a better person and, and more knowledgeable. So like if you know nothing about being a doctor and you do your research and you get the, the details of being a doctor right and you get the details of space right, right, that's amazing. It, it's, it's incredible because readers read to become more empathetic and to become more compassionate and to, to learn, right? And it, it's pretty cool that we can do that as writers too. So there's no denying that this is absolutely exhilarating and it's just honestly intoxicating <laughs> because you can go anywhere you want, you can be anyone you want, you can write anyone you want, and you can throw anything on the page that you want and that's a very liberating and powerful thing. The second pro on this is that it keeps things interesting. If you wake up one day and you want to write something different, then you can write something different. The, the golden handcuffs don't necessarily exist in this situation and therefore it's harder for you to potentially burn out. All right, let's talk about the cons of writing what you don't know uh, because they're they're very big. <laughs> so the first one is that it's very easy to get this wrong, like really easy. There are any number of pitfalls that you can fall into, and I'm talking racial, gender, ethnic, um, everyday things that you can just mess up um, that will detract readers from your story. So let me tell you a story. I met a writer once at a, a writing conference. And we were having a long conversation and uh, we were talking about this very topic. And uh, he said, you know what, I, 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 I believe in writing what I don't know because I live a very boring life. <laughs> so I believe in writing what I don't know. And I also believe that we need diverse representation in fiction. And therefore, I have friends who are of all races and I want my, my stories and my fiction to reflect my own personal reality. So I'm going to write stories about Asian people. I'm going to write stories about white people. I'm going to write stories about people from all walks of life and from all classes of life because that's, that's the lens in which I live. And personally, I got no problem with that. I think you, you should be able to write whatever you want to write. And honestly, I think it's pretty noble, right? But, but and this is a big but, <laughs> readers don't necessarily care about your intent. You can have the greatest intent in the world. What ultimately matters is what ends up on the page. And you can do all the research in the world of what it's like to, say, live in Kenya um, and what it's like to grow up in Kenya, even though you've never set foot in Kenya and you don't know any Kenyan people. Um, but if you mess something up <laughs> and, and it, you get it on the page the wrong way, it doesn't matter what your intent is. People are still going to call you out on it. So this is my PSA to people who feel that they need to write what they don't know. All right, and that is do your research <laughs> and, and also be prepared to be wrong. You roll the dice enough, you're gonna be wrong at some point and you have to be prepared um, to use that as a way, one, to learn and to become more compassionate and empathetic and two, to use that as a way to start a conversation about your mistake and uh, how you can bring awareness to what you did wrong. I think that is a fundamental thing that you have to make sure you do because this is an inherent risk when you are writing what you don't know. Why do I say that? Well, there are a number of uh, things going on right now, controversies in the writing community, uh, of people calling out other people of being racist and so on and so forth. I think you know what those controversies are if you're watching this as this video goes live. Um, so you just have to make sure that if you're gonna write something uh, with somebody who has a background that you don't know, that you talk to people, right? That you do your research um, and, and, and you just have to know that even if you do all the research in the world, there's still some details you're probably gonna get wrong. It's just that's, just, that's just part of the game. But talk to people, get some feedback from people on whether you know what you write might be offensive. I don't necessarily know that I believe in going the sensitivity reader route. I, 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 I have some problems with that personally, um, but you def at a minimum, you definitely wanna talk to people um, from the background of the character that you have to make sure that what you've got on the page is okay. Because at the end of the day, uh, I think we can all agree, we just want people to be people on the page. You don't want people to be tokens and you don't want them to fit into stereotypes. You just want them to be people. So if you're gonna do that, get some help 
in making sure that your characters come across that way to readers. The next con about writing what you don't know is that it can be harder to develop an audience at first, right? Because you're still, you're learning a lot of things with that first book um, and it just takes a little bit more time in my experience. But if you can develop an audience of readers who do like your work, uh, I find that the things that you learn from one genre, you can take to the next genre. I just think it helps you become a more global writer, and I think it helps you execute on a higher level as well um, when you do understand um, different people and different stories from different backgrounds. So yeah, I, I think that the upsides of writing what you don't know are pretty high, but I do think that they're fraught with perils if you're not careful. So just a couple stories from my own personal life on, on why I believe the things that I believe in this video. So I wrote a space opera uh, called Galaxy Mavericks, and I was very proud of the, of, of the, of the series, but I found out that I, I got a lot of the science wrong. Even though I did a lot of research on space and, and things before I wrote the series, there were just some technical details that I got wrong. Readers had no problems at all with the story, but the technical details got, got in the way of the story that I was trying to tell. So if I could go back in time and do that again, what I would have done was probably hired somebody that um, has a space background and hired them to read the book and give me some professional feedback on what was the matter. Or I could have talked to somebody, but um, sometimes I find that hiring people can be better because you'll get higher quality feedback. All right. That's something that I could have done very early on throughout my novel um, to help me, you know, get those get some of those details right and eliminate my blind spots because it was my blind spots that ultimately got in the way on that. Now, on the flip side of that, I have my Good Necromancer series, which is a series that I wrote that's right in the pocket. Right. It's about a black man who lives in St. Louis. Um, I grew up in St. Louis. I know the areas where uh, my main character, Lester, goes. Uh, the characters that are in that story are inspired by people who were in my own life, and so uh, I, I know that story pretty well, uh, and, and that's one of the stories that readers really like from me. So I've done both, I, I've lived both, <laughs> I've made the mistakes of both, and so uh, I, I hope that you will learn from my experience, and, and I hope that this video gives you some things to think about. So here are my bottom line suggestions for writing what you don't know, all right? If you're gonna write what you don't know, if you don't know the genre, read a lot in that genre, especially self-published writers, who are writing in that genre. If there's a certain aspect of the story that you don't know about, such as a race, gender, geography, do your research. And lastly, consider hiring somebody to help you in subject matter areas that you don't know about. So for example, if you have a story uh, where a police officer is pretty prominent in the story, see if you can get a police officer to read your story uh, and be sure to compensate them for their feedback. You're gonna pay a little bit more in editing. I think that's the, the the thing you got to be okay with, um, but you're gonna you're gonna have a story that's better off and more technically accurate, uh, and it's gonna eliminate those blind spots that you have, which is which is your goal. So yes, you would have to spend more in editing, um, but that's just par for the course. And even if you do spend more editing and hiring people to come in as subject matter experts, it's still probably gonna be less money overall than if you'd hired a developmental editor. All right, you guys know how I feel about that. So. Again, this is uh, something that you have to do at your own peril. But anyway, I hope that this video helped you, and I hope that um, I, I covered some things that maybe others didn't uh, just based on my experience. So don't forget to subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Perfect.